I am truly grateful for the invitation. I am very honored to be here. Um, it is my plan to. It is my plan to um, review for you. Sorry. Okay. The transport of sodium and potassium along the nephron. I will examine also their impact of sodium and potassium on blood vessels the brain and elsewhere. And I want to leave with two conclusions. My first conclusion is that it is the combined effect of sodium excess and potassium deficit, the, the impact on the blood vessels and the overall toxicity. It is not possible to separate completely the, the effects of sodium excess as compared to potassium. And the second conclusion is that Potassium is truly a natural antidote for sodium excess. Let's. It appears that truly our kidneys are poised to conserve sodium and excrete potassium. That uh, basically was serving quite well prehistoric humans and anyone eating natural foods. Why is that? because the potassium intake is in millimoles per day, is about tenfold the sodium intake. And therefore, the risk of those individuals was salt deficit, but they were very capable of getting rid of potassium. Therefore, what happened is that that design is unfit today, in which we have a sodium-rich potassium poor diet. That is to say, while in prehistoric humans, the potassium intake was tenfold the sodium intake, our sodium intake is the reverse, is three times higher the sodium intake than the potassium. The end result is that we uh, develop salt excess, sodium excess, and potassium deficit. Let's examine where it's coming from. Well, truly is in this slide, you can see we have the renal tubular cell and the basolateral means the basolateral membrane is the, the luminal membrane. I want to, to point that increase of stimulation is indicated by these solid arrows. <clears throat> Broken arrows indicate decrease on or inhibition. In hypertension, particularly in experimental models of hypertension, especially in rats, it has been shown that at the basolateral membrane, membrane, sodium pump is stimulated. Is stimulated by what? Stimulated by potassium depletion, is stimulated by aldosterone, stimulated by endogenous oabain, and some mutations, etc. What is the important sodium pump? <clears throat> the sodium pump is truly the engine that promotes uh, electrolyte and solute transport across the entire nephron. What happened in the, in the apical membrane? At the lumen, we have a series of transporters. In the proximal tubule, <clears throat> the, the dominant exchanger is sodium hydrogen antiport. In the thick ascending lump of Henle is the sodium potassium two chloride co-transporter. In the distal tubule is the sodium chloride co-transporter and in the collecting duct epithelial sodium channel. The point being that not only at the basolateral membrane you have stimulated the sodium pump, but all these transporters of sodium are stimulated in experimental animals. How, what is uh, triggering that? Well, <clears throat> sympathetic activity and angiotensin II stimulate all four transporters that I I mentioned, <clears throat> but aldosterone <clears throat> stimulate all of them except for the sodium hydrogen <clears throat> antiport. In addition to that, potassium uh, depletion stimulate sodium transport by inducing intracellular acidosis, in addition to stimulation of sympathetic activity and angiotensin II. <clears throat> what about potassium excretion? Well, the stimulation of sodium 
the stimulation of NAC epithelial sodium channels in the lower part of the on the slide uh, shows that as you stimulate epithelial sodium channels, sodium moves from the lumen to the to the cell, creating a negative voltage, and the negative voltage promotes through open potassium channels calluresis. So the enhanced the enhanced sodium transport, particularly in the distal nephron collecting duct, promote calluresis. So basically, this summarizes the situation about the kidneys. The modern Western diet has a high sodium intake and low potassium intake. <clears throat> the high sodium intake plus enhanced reabsorption of sodium tend to produce renal sodium uh, retention and body sodium excess. But in addition to that, the low potassium intake that is part of the Western diet plus ineffective potassium uh, conservation due to excessive renal and fecal potassium loss. I want to stress, <clears throat> Dr. Appel uh, pointed a, a very interesting po uh, aspect about the fecal excretion. When you are on a low potassium intake, fecal excretion, that typically people think that is 10% of potassium intake, it could be 50% or 60% particularly in blacks, it has been shown that they may lose in the, in the feces more potassium than in the urine. Therefore, uh, it's a, the second point I want to say, you have regulation for, for potassium retention in the kidney that is not as good as regulation for salt retention, but you don't have for fecal excretion. So it's, it's other uh, major problem. <clears throat> but in addition to that, you can see that the, that the uh, increased sodium eventually leads to body sodium excess and decreased potassium tend to produce potassium deficit. But you have two loops also. The high, potas high sodium intake worsens the, the potassium conservation. But also the second loop, that body potassium deficit tend to uh, increase a sodium retention. So therefore, unfortunately, they fit each other. The end result is cellular sodium uh, excess, cellular potassium deficit, vasoconstriction and hypertension, as we will see uh, very shortly. So what about in the blood vessels? Well, truly you can see that in the blood vessels is where the vasoconstriction lead to increased peripheral vascular resistance and hypertension. Is there a direct effect on the blood vessels? Yes, there is. Okay. Uh, but before jumping into a blood vessel, I have just a, a significant comment about mineralocorticoid hypertension. As you know, a classic model of sodium-dependent hypertension has been to give DOCA acetate deoxycorticosterone plus high salt intake you induce hypertension. And you can see that when you administer mineralocorticoids plus a high salt diet, you develop, uh, I would say, pathological effects on the kidney, on the heart, on the arteries, in the CNS and metabolism. But of interest is that exp experimental studies largely in rats have shown that if you have a high sodium intake plus a low potassium diet, high sodium intake decreases mineralocorticoids and low potassium diet also decreases uh, uh, aldosterone. So when you have this diet in which you have complete suppression of mineralocorticoids, you have identical tissue effects. This is an indication that it is truly the salt intake, the salt excess and potassium deficit not directly the aldosterone responsible for that. And we will see that certainly is a, uh, there is a strong relationship between them. Now, as I said, oh, there's a problem. We are no signal. Okay. Okay. What about in the vessels? As we said, in the vessel, this is the vascular smooth muscle. In the vascular smooth muscle, you can see that uh, 
uh, that the body deficit will go in the left uh, uh, corner, the left lower corner, body potassium deficit plus endogenous oabine tend to depress the sodium potassium pump. Depression of sodium potassium pump, that is the so-called sodium pump, uh, results in several effects. Number one, increases cytosolic sodium, as in the increases cytosolic sodium promotes a sodium calcium exchange, calcium enter the, the, the cell and uh, uh, cytosolic calcium increases, uh, acts on the active myosin uh, um, complex and produce vascular constriction. Again, in this slide, uh, solid arrows are increases, broken arrows are decreases. But in addition to increase cytosolic sodium, cytosolic potassium goes down. And as intracellular potassium goes down, uh, you, uh, tend to close uh, potassium channels. Potassium channels are also tend to close by hypokalemia. As you know, the, the cellular voltage is basically a potassium diffusion potential. So if you close the potassium channels, you tend to depolarize the cell. So again, the, the decrease conductance in the potassium channels produce inhibition of, of uh, membrane potential. But also the, the sodium pump is electrogenic, electrogenic because it's, it's moving out uh, a different amount of sodium than potassium, and therefore uh, produce uh, depolarization of vascular smooth muscle that tends to uh, uh, activate voltage-dependent calcium channels that promotes an increase in cytosolic calcium. Again, uh, acting myosin interaction occurs, a vascular constriction. So you can see here how these alterations acting directly on vascular sm sm smooth muscle tend to reproduce vas a vascular constriction. What about uh, effect of endothelium? Well, effect of endothelium Potassium has been known to, to induce vasodilation. How does it work? You can see that the high potassium diet or increased uh, extracellular potassium uh, produce two phenomena, two effects. Stimulate, again, you can see the arrow is solid. Solid arrow is stimulation. Broken arrow is inhibition. So high, hyper, high potassium or high, sodium diet, high potassium diet stimulate sodium pump and also open potassium channels. By the two effects result in hyperpolarization, that is to say membrane voltage is increased. As membrane voltage is increased uh, in the endothelial cell, uh, then acts on, on endo, endoplasmic reticulum, release calcium, increase cytosolic calcium, increase cytosolic calcium, open potassium channels. These uh, potassium channels of uh, low conductance and intermediate conductance uh, lead to potassium exit into the intercellular space that this release of potassium in the space between the endothelium and vascular smooth, smooth muscle open potassium channels and, and act, act stimulate the, the, the sodium pump in the vascular smooth muscle. So that tend to produce increase in membrane voltage uh, in the cell, the now uh, the membrane voltage in the cells acts and on the voltage-dependent calcium channels, then, then they are closed, decrease cytosolic calcium, and vascular contraction occurs. But furthermore, the hyperpolarization uh, that is increasing the voltage uh, membrane in the endothelial cell is transmitted through gap junctions to the vascular smooth muscle. The point being that, as you know, when, the, when you have hyperpolarization, that is to say, it's a more negative voltage within the cell, uh, results in uh, decreased cytosolic calcium and vascular relaxation. Is there any other important effect about sodium and potassium on the endothelium? Yes, it is. And here, And may have the next slide. Thank you. So, what about the effect of sodium and potassium on endothelial st stiffness? 
you can see in the vertical axis, we have endothelial cell stiffness. And you can see that when the, the, the path has extracellular sodium of 130, uh, are, uh, solid dots, you have a particular level of endothelial cell stiffness. If you move to 150, that is the serum's higher serum sodium, uh, extracellular sodium, produce uh, endothelial cells to become stiff and decrease production of nitric oxide. But also in the horizontal axis, you have extracellular potassium. And you can see that at higher potassium, you can see that cell stiffness decreases as softer the cells and increase uh, nitric oxide production. So these are in, uh, uh, clearly demonstrate that, that uh, there is some other uh, mechanism other than uh, what we discussed about uh, uh, membrane potential. Um, I want also to move now to the effect on the brain. Uh, here in the brain, we have uh, experimental study has shown that signals, uh, including changes in the CSF and plasma serum and potassium, as well as uh, circulating hormones, aldosterone, angiotensin, and endogenous oabain, acts on some sensors in the third ventricle, in an area of the third ventricle where there is no blood brain barrier. Organovascular lamina terminales and acts on the transmit to the hypothalamus, the hypothalamus, largely preoptic, supraoptic, paraventricular nucleus, who uh, <coughs> then interact with nucleus tractus solitarius, is a switchboard that integrates a vascular response and acts as sympathetic and parasympathetic and eventually to a vascular wall. Um, how does it is transmitted? Well, the way it's transmitted, we'll see just the effect of sodium. Sodium, sodium surface is on the left, uh, acts on the central glass. The central glass stimulates angiotensin to an aldosterone, which in turn, aldosterone, brain aldosterone, uh, acts, uh, uh, promotes secretion of endogenous oabain, depressed sodium pump, and produce sympathetic activity. Exactly this, the opposite effect occurs by potassium. So these are the experimental studies largely in animals. So I want to, to basically uh, conclude to, with two slides. The, this slide has been uh, presented before. In some way, I didn't talk with Dr. Appel, but <laughs> he, his view, and you can see that how sodium sensitivity is wiped out with potassium intake. And the, and the last slide that I want to say is, this is experimental animal showing what is the impact of a either low or a high potassium intake on blood plasma and cardiovascular risk on a high sodium diet. So if you have animals on a high sodium diet, animals on a high sodium diet, and you put on a high potassium intake, let's see what happens high sodium intake and high potassium intake as compared to low. You prevent or ameliorate uh, um, mineral called hypertension. You reduce the need of antihypertensive medication. You inhibit sodium sensitivity. You promote negative sodium balance. Uh, you displace intracellular sodium for, by retaining potassium. You suppress the circulating and tissue rust. Both rust are, are suppressed. You restore baroreceptor <coughs> sensitivity. Okay. What about in the kidney? You suppress renal release. You reduce renal vascular resistance. You increase GFR. You tend to pro protect kidney damage. And on the brain, you tend to stimulate the neuronal sodium pump, depress sympathetic activity, suppress central effects of aldosterone, depress central effects of endogenous oabain. So, so, I, I, I ran out of town <laughs> before I kick out. <laughs> but thank you very much for thank all you. of the, the background and in such a short time. Thank you.